Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So in front of us is the 2023 Ford Bronco Badlands. It's finished off in Area 51 and we'll go over the MSRP once we go over all the specs and features for this very capable and smaller size SUV. So let's start off with what powers this Bronco because there are two different engine options available. This model has the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder engine. This engine is only paired to the seven speed manual transmission. It pumps out 275 horsepower, 315 pound feet of torque, sent through that four wheel drive system. Zero to 60 for this is around 7.7 seconds with a top speed of 128. So it's not very performance oriented for on the road. It is more performance oriented for off road. It has around eight and a half inches of ground clearance and an approach angle of 37 degrees. Breakover angle is 29 and the departure angle is, 30, is uh, 46 actually. So it is very capable in the stock form that it's in right now. So let's move on to the exterior styling now where this has a steel front bumper. You'll see the bull bar attached to it too. This model has some aftermarket lights on both sides. There's also skid plates up underneath, but this bumper is very, very thin, which is why it has that amazing approach angle. You can even take some parts of it off if you need a little bit different of a design or you need a little bit more uh, clearance up front. Now you'll see that Bronco is also spelled out in white letters with the gray grill surrounding everything. It's even surrounding the LED headlights, DRLs and turn signals. And then for the roof or the hood, it has a few bulges on the back section there. And then we also have these pieces here. You can actually attach cables to these and run them up to this point here where this model currently has an aftermarket light bar, but you can run the cables there or the accessories that you have which is very cool, it comes from the factory that way. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has a set of 17 inch wheels with that two-tone design. This even has the Bilstein tuned suspension, which you can kind of hopefully see a little bit of with that bumper clearance. We have the fender flares, even has a set of rock sliders from the factory, which is pretty cool to see. Now for these side mirrors, they do have a plastic finish to them, but you'll notice that they are fixed to the base of the windshield. So that way you can store these doors much easier when you take them off. Not having that mirror attached is definitely very beneficial. Now this also has the three piece hardtop roof, which is also removable. And then one line right above the door handles there, which just gives it a cool look. Now for the rear, this has the full size spare with the backup camera, steel rear bumper too, with all the parking sensors, tow hooks, and it has a towing ca capabilities of around 3,500 pounds. Now, as we work our way to the interior, you can actually lock this with the door handle there if you want to. And with that shock, makes it easy to open that even with the full size spare. From there, we can just lift up the glass and then being a four seater and the two door version, not a whole lot of space behind the back seats. It is doable as you can see, we have some items in here. There's also some tie down hooks in case you need to uh, secure anything in the back. Now, as far as being able to fold these back seats down, you do actually have to go around and pull the bottom rest out. So from here, we can just do that. And then you will see, we can fold the seat down from here, just pulling on this tab. You can get that headrest out of the way if needed. So it gives you a little bit more practicality. If you're not looking for the four door model, I do wish there was a grab handle here. You kind of have to grab on that to bring the seat back up. But if you're not looking for the four door model, you don't need that much space. You can still make it practical and fold those back seats down. And then as we work our way to the interior, you'll notice too that we have the keypad on the outside of that door. There's even more of the Area 51. We have a net in the bottom and an area where you can lift the door. Once you remove it, makes it a lot easier to carry. And the rest of it is kind of just plastics. This is an off-roader, so it's gonna be uh, much more durable and easier to clean while you are off the pavement. Now, as we move this front seat forwards, we can put this bottom back into place. It is just that easy. And at five foot 10, I still have a good amount of space. Plenty of room for my feet. There's also some auxiliaries here. I have three or four inches above my head. This has the carpeted headliner too, just to give it a little bit more insulation. And it's very roomy, massive window for your backseat passengers. There's a cup holder on both sides. So it's doable. I could be extremely comfortable 
riding in the back of this. So you're not sacrificing your back seat passenger room if you don't want the four-door model, which is great. Now, as we look at the front seats, of course, they're leather, they're heated. Bronco badge is right in the middle there. And then there is a grab handle on the side, so that's easy to enter and exit. We have the steering wheel, which is completely covered in leather. And then, like I mentioned earlier, this is a seven speed manual. So you have six for normal driving and then a crawl gear too, and obviously reverse. So with my foot on the brake and the clutch, we'll fire this up with the headlight and the DRL button. We can bring this to life. You'll see on the left side of the steering wheel, all the cruise control settings, lane keeping assist and volume. On the right side, there's Bluetooth and voice commands along with tuning. And then all of these will go through the uh, gauge cluster there. So you'll see on the left side, there's miles per hour and the engine temperature. And then on the right side of the digital screen, it was currently on the calm setting. We can scroll down to fuel economy, monitor trip information. You can even look at off-road settings, look at your tire pressure, and then you have my view, which is right here, which is everything that we just saw. You can configure that and add or delete items just depending on what you want to see. So under the main menu, we can go through a few other settings like navigation, your phone, audio, and then settings that you can go into and monitor. So not a ton of information, but it's very nice to have all of that front and center. Now on the left side, you will see the e-brake, all the headlight adjustments, dimmer switches for the gauges. And then right in the middle, we have the sway bar disconnect, front and rear lockers, traction control, and the hazards. And then underneath that, we have the uh, touchscreen system. This is the home screen right now, where you can see navigation along with music and phone. And then there's shortcuts underneath where you can get to all this information, just depending on what you'd like to see. So different apps like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, some settings to go into, and then even some features for the driver assistance and your towing. So again, not a whole lot of info, but it definitely gives you everything that you need. We have the air vents on both sides too. And then right in the middle, there's power and volume for the radio, tuning, the engine start stop feature. This even has the heated seats like I mentioned earlier. Temperature dials are on both sides. And then we have a few other controls that you can go through. Now moving underneath that, you'll see a little bit of storage along with another auxiliary. And then we even have different driving modes, the four wheel drive selectors and a downhill assist control. So by rotating that dial, you will see the different driving modes pop up in the gauge cluster where there are three for on-road and then there's four for off-road. You will notice too that the graphic changes just depending on the mode that you are in. So it's pretty cool just depending on where you are taking your Bronco and what you need to use it for. Now there's a passenger grab handle so they can hold on while you're off-road. And then for the shifter, if I pull this up, I can go into reverse. You will see the backup camera along with the top down view. You can also go into crawl by doing that too. And then you can go back into the rest of the regular gears from there. Now there's a little bit of storage with the Ford badge just behind that. Two cup holders. There's also the window controls, side mirror adjustments. And then this also has a locking center armrest. So you can slide this. There's an auxiliary there if you wanna charge some electronics. Bronco is also spelled out on the airbag cover, a little bit of storage in that glove box there. And then up top, this even has a factory set of auxiliary switches. So like the light bar that you see up front, you can hook that up to this. So that way you can turn that on and off very quickly. And then we'll get a look at visibility from the driver's seat. It is so open on this interior. Very, very easy to see. But now let's get the seven speed Bronco out on the road. And one more acceleration from second. I will say it's not a slow vehicle. It has 315 pound feet of torque. So you can, you can get up and move, even though it has that slower zero to 60 time, this is not meant for zero to 60, but I wouldn't say it's sluggish. It, it feels like it gets up and gets out of its own way. Uh, which is of course nice to see for the engine size because if you want the seven speed manual, you can only get the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder. So for that engine, you know, you're not really sacrificing much to get the manual. And you know, we're up to speed. It, it feels very nice. I've been in some other SUV and pickup trucks 
with manuals and I gotta say this is pleasant to drive. I do like it for this style of vehicle. But as we're behind the wheel now for this $50,000 Bronco, it's pretty nice. I've always wanted a Bronco uh, since they came out. I owned a Jeep Wrangler for a few months and that was an okay SUV. Uh, I know there's the Jeep life. A lot of people like the Wranglers. Personally, it was a lot of fun. Um, but once I saw the Bronco come out, I had second thoughts on getting a, another Wrangler. I would buy a Bronco over a Wrangler all day long, and obviously that's a personal taste and choice, uh, but I can definitely see getting a Bronco and maybe going with a manual transmission. My first real drive behind the wheel, and I am not hating this at all. Very, very nice. I like the interior for this model too. We are missing, um, I believe it is the trail turn assist, which if you go with a higher package, you can obviously upgrade to that. But this is a nice on-road on driving experience. And if you wanna see the Bronco off-road, we made a few videos on that when we went to the Bronco off-rodeo. I won't be taking this one off the pavement, of course, but check out those videos. They're a while back on our channel. Just, just, it's amazing how capable this is for an independent front suspension. On the Wranglers, you have the solid front axle. The independent front suspension gives this a much more comfortable on-road driving experience, but with that electronic sway bar disconnect on the fly, you can push that button, get a little bit more travel out of that independent front, and it's pretty much almost as capable as a Wrangler unless you are truly rock crawling where you need the capabilities of that solid front axle. So from a driving as a daily perspective, this is much more comfortable on the road because of that independent front suspension. And for the 5% or so of the time that someone's actually taking this off the pavement, it is still truly incredible for the dirt situations. So it's honestly the best of both worlds. Really nice on-road, incredible capabilities off-road, and you can even get one cheaper than 50 grand. You can get one probably in the high 30s, low 40s, if you truly just want a basic model. Uh, it's going to be missing some of these features, but it just depends on what you wanna do. Take the doors, the roof off, have that open experience, and just cruise around in your Bronco. It's definitely a sweet SUV. I love the six-speed manual. But I think that is going to wrap it up for this walk around review and test drive in the 2023 Ford Bronco Badlands. Once again, a huge shout out to Carolina Auto Direct for providing this SUV for me today. Check out their website. That link is down in the description. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.